Hello friends, welcome to another lesson of Exploring God's Word. We are in the series called Bible Basics. This series consists of eight different lessons. Today we are going to study part one of Old Testament organization. But before we begin, if you would like the captions for this video in your local language, you can turn on the auto translate setting to your language of preference. You can see the instructions to do so in the description below. If you like the video and would like to learn more about the lessons in the series, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. Also, I do live Sunday school sessions weekly. You are welcome to join us. It is fun to interact and discuss. Details for the timings and meeting link are in the description. Let us pray before we begin. Dear God, today as we study some of the Old Testament books, help us to understand them more. I ask this prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Do you remember these categories from our last lesson called Anatomy of the Bible? Today we are going to look at the books on the first three categories of the Old Testament. Also, do you remember this Bible timeline from our previous lessons? We are basically going to look at the books written in this time period. You all know the first five books of the Bible. Genesis means beginnings. That is the theme of this book. It records the beginning of the world in Genesis chapter 1 and the beginning of God's covenant people, Israel. It has the record of creation and the flood and Noah's ark and the record of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and the forming of 12 tribes of Israel for God's covenant people. Basically, God chose to reveal himself through the nation of Israel. At the end of the book of Genesis, the 12 tribes of Israel are in Egypt and they grow in number. However, they are treated as slaves in Egypt as we come to the book of Exodus. God chooses Moses to rescue the Israelites and from the slavery in Egypt. God also gives the Ten Commandments to the Israelites through Moses to help them understand how to worship God and live their life. With the help of God, Moses parts the Red Sea and this is how they begin their journey to the promised land of Canaan. In the book of Leviticus, God provides them the instruction to build the tabernacle so that they could worship him according to his rules. He also instructs them how to offer different sacrifices. Moses is still their leader. In the book of Numbers, God instructs Moses to take account of the number of people in different tribes before they enter the promised land. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses repeats the law to the people of Israelites about how to live their lives and how to worship God. Keep in mind, they are still wandering in the desert all these years, around 40 years or so. However, at the end of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses dies even before they enter the promised land. Now we are in the 12 books of the history of Israel. Before dying, Moses appoints Joshua as the new leader of Israelites. Joshua not only leads the people in the promised land, but also helps them win in wars with different nations who occupied the promised land. However, Joshua dies and the Israelites lose another leader. 
God appoints different judges like Samson, Deborah, and Gideon to lead the Israelites. The book of Ruth was written around the same time, and that is why it is placed between these books. It tells the story of Ruth and how she remained faithful to God. She was rewarded by God by making her the great-grandmother of King David and by putting her in Christ's lineage. However, in the meanwhile, the judges died too. The people of Israel ask God for a king, and God appoints King Saul as their first king through Samuel. The book of 1 and 2 Samuel talk about the reign of King Saul and King David. It also has a wonderful story of friendship between Jonathan and David. And the famous story of David killing the giant Goliath. It ends with the wonderful reign of King David. But King David was getting weak and he appoints his son Solomon as the king. King Solomon was the wisest king and he builds a beautiful temple, a place of worship for God. However, after him the kingdom of Israel gets divided into northern and southern kingdom. And Israel sees good and bad kings. This is recorded in the books of 1st and 2nd Kings. The books of 1st and 2nd Chronicles records the events from the 1st and 2nd Samuel and 1st and 2nd Kings. After the kingdom gets divided, the people of Israel are taken as captives to Babylon for 70 years. All their city and temple and the Jerusalem wall was destroyed. They returned to Jerusalem after captivity and Ezra and Nehemiah urged them to rebuild the temple and the wall. The book of Esther was also written during the time of restoration and rebuilding of Israel. It talks about the faithfulness of Queen Esther towards her people and God. Now we are in the poetry section. All these books are written in songs or poems. The story of Job is about a man who loses everything, suffers immensely, trusts God throughout, and gets back more than he had before. The book of Psalms is probably the most popular book. A lot of our worship songs are born out of the Psalms. In fact, the word Psalm actually means sacred song or poem used in worship. Do you know the longest Psalm? It is Psalms 119. And the shortest Psalm? Psalms 117. Proverbs is written by Solomon and has wise sayings. The theme of Ecclesiastes is about the wisdom of the meaning of life, also written by Solomon. The theme of the book of Song of Solomon is a loving relationship between God and his people, Israelites. Now that we've been through the first three categories of the Old Testament, Hopefully you've got a good understanding of the first 22 books of the Bible. In the next lesson, we will cover the last two categories that are written by the prophets to the people of Israel, urging them to repent from their sins and look for the coming of the Messiah. Before we leave, it will be a good idea to memorize the theme of each of the books we studied today. Be on the lookout for more videos in this series and other topics as well. Lastly, remember, studying the Old Testament will give you a better understanding of the New Testament. Until we meet, have a blessed time.